everyone it is still monday april 13th um it is still gross and rainy outside and um i'm gonna read you chapter 11 journey to dream country if you remember the giant has all of those jars all around that um have dreams inside and now um they're going to go out and he's going to show sophie how he catches them okay after the mad frob scottle party was over Sophie settled herself again on top of the enormous table. You is feeling better now, asked the big friendly giant. Much better, thank you, Sophie said. Whenever I was feeling a bit scrawny, the BFG said, a few gollops of frob scottle is always making me hopscotchy again. I must say it's quite an experience, Sophie said. It's a raz twizzler, the BFG said. It is gloriumptious. He turned away and strode across the cave and picked up his dream catching net. I is galloping off now, he said, to catch some more, to catch some more, oh, catch some more whoopsie wish whiffling dreams for my collection. I is doing this every day without missing. Is you wishing to come with me? Not me, thank you very much, Sophie said. Not with those other giants lurking outside. I is snuggling you very cozy into the pocket of my waistcoat, the BFG said. Then no one is seeing you. Before Sophie could protest, he had picked her up off the table and popped her into the waistcoat pocket. There, were there was plenty of room in there. Is you wishing for a little hole to peep out from, he asked her. There is one already, she said. She had found a small hole in the pocket, and when she put one eye close to it, she could see out very well indeed. <clears throat> she, she watched the BFG as he bent down and filled his suitcase with empty glass jars. He closed the lid, picked up the suitcase in one hand, took the pole with the net on the end in the other hand, and marched towards the entrance of the cave. Um, as soon as he was outside, the BFG set off across the great hot yellow wasteland where the blue rocks lay and the dead trees stood and where all the other giants were skulking about. This chapter, I want you to think about um, how the other giants treat the BFG and why. Sophie, squatting low on her heels in the pocket of her leather waist waistcoat, had one eye glued to the little hole. She saw the group of enormous giants about 300 yards ahead. Hold your breaths, the BFG whispered down to her. Cross your finglers. Here we go. We is going right past all these other giants. Is you seeing that whopping great one, the one nearest to us? I see him, Sophie whispered back, quivering. That is the horriblest one of them all and the biggest of them all. He is called the, the flesh lump eating giant. I don't want to hear about him, Sophie said. He is 54 feet high, the BFG said softly as he jogged along, and he is swalloping human beings like they is sugar lumps two or three at a time. You're making me nervous, Sophie said. I is nervous myself, the BFG whispered. I always gets as jumpy as a jog humper when the flesh, the flesh lump eating giant is around. Keep away from him, Sophie pleaded. Not possible, the BFG answered. He is galloping easily two times as quickly as me. Shall we turn back, Sophie said. Turning back is worse, the BFG said. If they is seeing me running away, they is all getting chase and throwing rocks. They would never eat you though, would they? Sophie asked. Giants is never guzzling other giants, the BFG said. <clears throat> they is fighting and squarreling a lot with each other, but never guzzling. Human beings is more tasty to them. The giants had already spotted the BFG and all heads were turned, watching him as he jogged forward. He was aiming to pass well to the right of the group. Through her little peephole, Sophie saw the flesh lump eating giant moving over to intercept them. He didn't hurry, he just loped over casually to a point where the VFG would have to pass. The others loped after him. Sophie counted nine of them all together, and she recognized the blood bottler in the middle of them. They were bored. They had nothing to do until nightfall. <clears throat> there was an air of menace about them that's like kind of like anger, like wanting to fight, as they loped slowly toward the plane with long, lolloping strides, heading for the BFG. Here comes the runty one, boomed the flesh lump eater. Ho, ho there, runty one. Where is you splash winkling away to in such a hefty hurry? He shot out an enormous arm and grabbed the BFG by the hair. 
The BFG didn't struggle. He simply stopped and stood quite still and said, be so kind as to be letting go of my hair, flesh lump eater. The flesh lump eater released him and stepped back a pace. The other giants stood around waiting for the fun to start. Now then, you little grob squiffler, boomed the flesh lump eater. We is all of us wanting to know where you is galloping off to every day in the daytime. Nobody ought to be galloping off to anywhere until it is getting dark. The human beings could easily be spotting you and starting a giant hunt, and we is not wanting that to happen, is we not? We is not, shouted the other giants. Go back to your cave, runty one. I is not galloping to any human being country, the BFG said. I is going to other places. I is thinking, said the flesh lump eater, that you is catching human beings and keeping them as pets. Right, you is, cried the blood bottler. Just now I is hearing him chittering away to one of them in his cave. You is welcome to go and search my cave from back to, from frack to bunt, the BFG answered. You can go looking into every nook and cranny. There is no human beans or stringy beans or runner beans or jelly beans or any other beans in there. Sophie crouched still as a mouse inside the BFG's pocket. She hardly dared breathe. She was terrified she might sneeze. The slightest sound or movement would give her away. Through the tiny peephole, she watched the giants clustering around the poor BFG. How revolting they were. All of them had piggy little eyes and enormous mouths with thick sausage lips. When the flesh lump eater was speaking, she got a glimpse of his tongue. It was jet black, like a slab of black steak. Every one of them was more than twice as tall as the BFG. Suddenly, the flesh lump eater shot out two enormous hands and grabbed the BFG around the waist. He tossed him high in the air and shouted, Catch him, manhugger! The manhugger caught him. The other giants spread out quickly in a large circle, each giant about 20 yards from his neighbor, preparing for the game they were going to play. Now the manhugger threw the BFG high and far, shouting, Catch him, bone cruncher! The bone cruncher ran forward and caught the tumbling BFG and immediately swung him up again. Catch him, child chewer, he shouted. And so it went on. The giants were playing ball with the BFG, vying with each other to see who could throw him the highest. Sophie dug her nails into the sides of the pocket, trying to prevent herself from tumbling out when she was upside down. She felt as though she were in a barrel going down Niagara Falls is a really really big waterfall that's between Canada and the U.S. And all the time there was a fearful danger that one of the giants would fail to catch the BFG and he would go crashing to the ground. Catch him meat dripper, catch him gizzard gulper, catch him maid masher, catch him blood bottler, catch him, catch him, catch him. In the end they got bored with this game. They dumped the poor BFG on the ground. He was dazed and shattered. They, give him, they gave him a few kicks and shouted, Run, you little runt! Let us be seeing how fast you is galloping. The BFG ran. What else could he do? The giants picked up rocks and hurled them after him. He managed to dodge them. Ruddy little runt, they shouted. Trotty little twit, shrivelly little shrimp, mucky little midget, squaggy little squib, grobby little grub. <clears throat> and here's a picture of the giants playing catch to the BFG. <clears throat> at last the bfg got clear of them all and in another couple of minutes the pack of giant was out of sight over the horizon sophie popped her head up from the pocket i didn't like that she said phew said the bfg few and far between they was in a nasty crotching mood today was they not i am sorry for having such a whirligig time no worse than you sophie said would they real would they ever really hurt you I isn't ever trusting them, the BFG said. How do they actually catch the humans they eat? Sophie asked. They is usually just sticking an arm in through the bedroom window and snitching them up from their beds, the BFG said. Like you did to me. Ah, but I isn't eating you, the BFG said. How else do they catch them? Sophie asked. Sometimes, the BFG said, they is swimming in from the sea like fishies, with only their heads showing above the water, and then out comes a big hairy hand and grabbles someone off the beach. Children as well? Often, Chiddlers, the BFG said, 
Little Chiddler is who is building sandcastles on the beach. That is who is who the swimmingling ones are after. Little Chiddlers is not so tough to eat as old Grandmama, so says the child-chewing giant. As they talked, the BFG was galloping fast over the land. Sophie was standing right up in his waistcoat pocket now and holding on to the edge with both hands. Her head and her shoulders were in the open and the wind was blowing in her hair. How else do they catch people, she asked. All of them is having their own special ways of catching the human being, the BFG said. The meat-dripping giant is preferring to pretend he is a big tree growing in the park. He is standing in the park in the dusky evening. He is holding great branches over his head. And there he is waiting until some happy families is coming to have a picnic under the spreading tree. <clears throat> the meat-dripping giant is watching them as they lay out their picnic. But at the end, it is the meat-dripper who is having the picnic. It's too awful, Sophie cried. The gizzard gulping giant is a city lover, the BFG went on. The gizzard gulper is lying high up between the roofs of the houses and the big cities. He is lying there snugly as a sniggler and watching the human beings walking on the street below. And when he sees one that looks like it has a wopsy good flavor, he grabs it. He is simply reaching down and snitching it off to the street like off the street like a monkey taking a nut. He says it's nice to be able to pick and choose what you is having for supper. He says it's like choosing from a menu. Don't people see him doing it? Sophie asked. Never is they seeing him. Do not forget it is dusky dark at this time. Also, the gizzard gulper has a very fast arm. His arm is going up and down quicker than squinkers. But if all these people are disappearing every night, surely there's some sort of outcry, Sophie said. The world is a whopping big place, the BFG said. It has a hundred different countries. The giants is clever. They is careful not to be skiddling off to the same country too often. They is always switch fiddling around. Even so, Sophie said. Do not forget, the BFG said, that human beings is disappearing everywhere all the time, even without giants is guzzling them up. Human beings is killing each other much quicker than the giants is doing it. But they don't eat each other. Sophie said, giants isn't killing each other, giants isn't eating each other either, the BFG said, nor is giants killing each other. Giants is not very lovely, but they is not killing each other, nor is croc crocodown dillies killing each other, killing other crocodown dillies, nor is cats killing other cats. They kill mice, Sophie said. Ah, but they is not killing their own kind, the BFG said. Human beings is the only animals that is killing their own kind. Don't poisonous snakes kill each other? Sophie asked. She was searching desperately for a, another creature that behaved as badly as the human. Even poisonous snakes is never killing each other, the BFG said. Nor is the most fearsome creatures like tigers and rhinoceroses. He really had that many S's in that. None of them is ever killing their own kind. Has you ever thought about that? Sophie kept silent. I is not understanding human beings at all, the BFG said. You is a human being and you is saying it is grizzling and hard gust for giants to be eating human beings, right or left. Right, Sophie said. But human beings is squishing each other all the time, the, the BFG said. They is shooting guns and going up in aeroplanes to drop their bombs on each other's heads every week. Human beings is always killing other human beings. He was right. Of course he was right, and Sophie knew it. She was beginning to wonder whether human beings were actually any better than giants. Even so, she said, defending her own race, I think it's rotten that those foul giants should have a go off every night to eat humans. Humans have never done them any harm. And that is what the little piggy wig is saying every day, the BFG answered. He is saying, I never done any harm to the human being, so why should he be eating me? Oh dear, Sophie said. The human beings is making rules to suit themselves, the BFG went on. But the rules they is making do not suit the little piggy wiggies. Am I right or left? Right, Sophie said. Giants is also making rules. Their rules is not suiting the human beings. Everybody is making his own rules to suit himself. But you don't like it that all those beastly giants are eating humans every night, do you? Sophie asked. I do not, the BFG answered firmly. One right is not making two lefts. 
So he's saying like two wrongs doesn't make a right. Like he doesn't think that it's right for the giants to be killing the human beings, but he's also making the point that like human beings kill e human beings kill each other and human beings like giants kill and eat animals. And he's saying that's kind of similar to what the giants are doing. Everybody makes up their own rules. So he's saying two wrongs don't make a right. Like the giants are doing bad things and the humans might be doing bad things, but the giants are still wrong. Then he says, he changes the subject. Is you quite cozy down there in my pocket? I'm fine, Sophie said. Then suddenly, once again, the BFG went into that magical top gear of his. He began hurtling forward with phenom phenomenal leaps. His speed was unbelievable. The landscape became blurred and again Sophie had to duck down into out of the whistling gale to save her head from being blown off her shoulders. She crouched in the pocket and listened to the wind screaming past. It came knifing in through the tiny peephole in the pocket and whooshed around her like a hurricane. But this time the BFG didn't stay in top gear long. It seemed as though he had some he had had some barrier to cross, a vast mountain perhaps, or an ocean or a great desert. But having crossed it, he once again slowed to his normal gallop and Sophie was able to pop her head out and look out once more at the view. She noticed immediately they were now in an altogether paler country. The sun had disappeared above a film of vapor. The air was becoming cooler every minute. The land was flat and treeless and there seemed to be no color in it at all. Every minute the mist became thicker. The air became colder still and everything became paler and paler until soon there was nothing but gray and white all around them. They were in a country of swirling mists and ghostly vapors. There was some sort of grass underfoot, but it was not green. It was ashy gray. There was no sign of a living creature and no sound at all except for the, thought, the soft thud of the BFG's footsteps as he hurled on through the fog. Suddenly he stopped. We is here at last, he announced. He bent down and lifted Sophie from his pocket and put her on the ground. She was still in her nighty and her feet were bare. She shivered and stared around her the swirling mists and ghostly vapors. Where are we? She asked. We is in dream country, the BFG said. This is where all dreams is beginning. And that's the end of that chapter. I'll see you in a few minutes to do the next one.